It's safe to say that 2017 has been the year of the loot boxes. While the practice has been around for a while now, it was during this year that it really took an abhorrent life of its own, with EA leading the charge. Battlefront 2 easily became the most egregious form of loot boxes ever conceived in a AAA title, with a progression system that entirely revolves around what are essentially glorified slot machines. The sad part is that you can tell that this could have easily been a fantastic game had EA not tainted it with their greedy antics, but in this day and age, I guess we shouldn't be surprised. That's sort of EA's thing. They ruin anything with great potential. Now, it wasn't all hopeless this year. 2017 was also the year in which microtransactions and loot boxes received the most stigmatization, a stigmatization that culminated in a bang during the Game Awards 2017. In case you didn't watch the show, there were three instances in which EA's predatory practices were completely roasted. The first one came courtesy of actor Zachary Levi, who pulled this ballsy move while presenting an award. And the game award goes to, oh man, I have to pay a microtransaction to unlock. That's so <laughs> stupid that this has to, hold on, I got this guys, here we go. You know it's true, it's, it's really stupid. Uh, the uh, winner, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Zachary Levi, you are my hero, but it didn't end there. The next instance occurred in this little clip presented by Bethesda. Today I'm here to talk to you about something serious. The need to save single player gamers. Everyday gamers in search of a single player experience are left behind. Forgotten, neglected, many were rescued and found their way into amazing adventures, but others, well, they weren't as fortunate. For the price of just a few Nuka-Cola quantums, you can share the fun of an epic single-player journey today. Together, we can end the pain for single-player gamers in need. Right? We work together. So this right here is clearly Bethesda's response to an utterly moronic thing that EA CFO Blake Jorgensen said about how players don't enjoy linear games anymore, likely referring to non-service, single-player experiences as a whole, ones that can't be played indefinitely for uncapped monetization and all that shit. Now, Bethesda isn't innocent in their own monetization practices. Their paid mods creation club service for Skyrim and Fallout 4 garnered a ton of backlash when it was first announced, and it continues to be universally hated by the gaming community. But Bethesda has shown a dedication towards dedicated single-player experiences with games that they have developed in-house and games that they have published, so that's definitely worth something. And then putting out this silly little video to low-key highlight how ridiculous EA stance is on single-player games goes a long way. Now this last one is, um... Interesting, I'm sure many of you have heard of this little incident by now, but Joseph Ferris, creative director of the upcoming A Way Out, who partnered with EA, both dissed loot boxes, but kind of defended EA? I don't know, the whole thing was pretty bizarre and confusing, but check it out. And this is my idea, it doesn't have anything with the EA shit going on, yeah. with the loot box and stuff. Okay. No, yeah. look, 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 I'm gonna say to you one thing, I'm gonna say to you one thing. EA has been very good to me. Yes. And, and uh, to be honest with you, they're getting, because it's nice to hate EA, blah, blah, I don't care about that shit. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is this, all publishers fuck up sometimes, you know? Yeah. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. They fuck up. His defense of EA's shitty practices that all publishers fuck up sometimes is obviously flimsy at best, since their fuck-ups have been calculated and deliberate for years now. But when one of their own partners brings the issue to the limelight, especially in the fashion that Joseph did, well, it'll raise a couple eyebrows at least. Now, the reason I'm highlighting these moments is because it goes to show that we have come a long way in the quote-unquote battle against loot boxes. The fact that people are so unafraid to speak out about this issue goes to show how widespread this whole thing is now. And that's a wonderful thing because one way to discourage publishers from employing predatory practices is by stigmatizing them. As their implementation becomes more and more of a marketing risk, it'll disincentivize them from pushing the envelope further. 2017 might have been the year of loot boxes, but it was also the year of loot box stigmatization. Ironically, in large part, thanks to EA 
EA's royal fuck-up with Battlefront 2. Perception of microtransactions and loot boxes are at an all-time low, and sentiments on the matter are so universal that as word gets around, the world's becoming more and more ballsy about speaking out against them. It's pretty incredible how far the conversation has come in just the last month, and the Game Awards' impromptu roasting of EA and greedy game publishers as a whole was a great way to close off the year, I think. Here's hoping that the conversation carries on throughout 2018 and beyond until publishers stop with this bullshit and begin treating their games and their consumers with a semblance of respect. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked this video, and if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon to help this channel stay independent and self-sustained. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay Stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.